So the new AP poll has come out, and I can't say very honestly that there's a whole lot of surprises on it. I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but I will go through kind of just a brief overview of 1 through 10. Um, there was only one team in the top 10 that maintained their position from, from last week, and it was Ohio State. But um, so we'll start at 10. We'll do it backwards. We'll start at 10 and work our way down. Michigan. Michigan comes in at 10. They are up two spots from the B12. Uh, Michigan won their game, as did most all, as did all but one of these these teams in the top 10. Michigan won their game by three points, I believe. A um, little bit of a struggle. I didn't catch very much of it. We were doing some some traveling yesterday, but at the same time, you know, apparently, you know, Michigan did show them something to get a little more respect to move up these up these spots. But quite frankly, they may have moved up some because some teams ahead of them uh, did poorly. There were several uh, team or one notable team that dropped out of the top 10, and that was um, Ole Miss. They dropped down to number 12. Um, so Michigan's in at number 10. Uh, Missouri moved up two spots to number nine. They were idle. So Missouri gets lucky on their bye week. You know, they, they move up two spots without really having to put in any work for it. But, hey, you know, that ain't that ain't shade thrown at them. I ain't I ain't hating them for it. Hey, you know, get the get the spots you can when they're giving them out for sure. So Missouri goes up to number nine, up two spots um, without without playing. Um, Miami fell one spot from seven to eight, though they did win their game. You know, I talked about that game the the other night after it was over and. You know, facts are facts. You know, there were several parts of that game where Miami didn't didn't look that great. I mean, you know, the fact remains is, yeah, Miami won the game. I was not trying to take anything anything away from that. And Miami is still a good team. I mentioned that Miami could still go on and play for the ACC. You know, and and in my prediction or not really a prediction video, but I talked, I did a video on Miami. Before I was really high on them, and I still am. I'm very high on Cam Ward. Um, you know, Cam Ward was the reason they stayed in that game the way they the way they did. So I, I'm not hating on Miami at all. Um, they've you know some questionable you know coaching decisions or whatever. But hey, in, in the day and age we live in now, that's just about everybody. I mean, have you seen some of the other games that went on this week? You know, if Miami made any poor coaching decisions or poor play call, and I promise you they were not the only one. That Be that as it may, though, Miami slips down one spot to number eight. They're, hey, they're fine. Miami's going to be fine. Uh, Penn State won their game, uh, moved up two spots into number seven. Again, I didn't really get to, to see that game, but, you know, by all accounts and from what I'm hearing from the several different, you know, sources and, and other stuff that I check out or whatever. Drew Aller has come along. I mean, I know to, to some people he was a bit of a disappointment last year at, at times, but apparently he seems to be having a pretty good year so far. I don't want to talk too far out of turn because, like I said, I haven't really seen Penn State play that much this year, but, uh, you know, they move up two spots to number seven. Oregon moved up two spots, took number six. They won their game. Um, Oregon is a team that – you know, will just kind of always be there that you're going to have to keep an eye on, um, you know, and, and, and they, and they've been like that for a long time. I mean, who, who else has been watching college football long enough to, to remember when, you know, when, you know, fast offenses, speed offenses, you know, were a thing. Oregon was the first one. Oregon was the first one and, and, you know, had some very good seasons, uh, playing that brand of football until the rest of college football started playing it the same way. But yeah, Oregon moves up two spots. Georgia, I'm not going to beat this into the ground because everybody else already has. And I did my reaction video last last night. Or Georgia falls three spots down to number five. And Georgia was the only team in the top ten, as it were, now to to lose their game. Georgia's not over and done with. Um, I got online just because I wanted to see what kind of what kind of fight I could get started and what, what little bit of trolling I could do. And I got online and said, oh, you know, Georgia's going to be 8-4 team, you know, several more losses coming, blah, 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 and that, whatever. 
it got it got pretty interesting. It it got pretty interesting. And you know, I, I did make the point last night about you know Georgia's already got this one loss. If Georgia goes to Texas and and loses to Texas, you know, worst case scenario, we get to November when a Tennessee game rolls around. You know, worst case scenario for both teams, Georgia's got two losses and Tennessee's got one. You know, if Tennessee loses to loses to Alabama. But Oregon, or Oregon, Georgia is still very much in the, the, the hunt for it. Their, their season's not over. They don't need to go firing coaches. They don't need to go benching players. I mean, you know, players are, even the, the great ones, are, are going to have some slip-ups. And, yeah, you know, Carson Beck throws three interceptions yesterday evening. And he'll be the first one to tell you, you know, he, he did not play well, you know. But, yeah, George is not out of it by by a long shot. Um, not 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 losing to Alabama. You know, if, if Georgia would have lost the game to Kentucky a couple of weeks ago, I you know, we'd be looking at Georgia with, with, with a very narrow side eye. But to Alabama, no, they didn't. They didn't look good. They got a lot to work with and a lot to learn from, but Georgia's still, Georgia's still in it. Tennessee's another one. You know, my volunteers, they were off this week too, sitting at home, you know, eating their popcorn, watching watching everybody else, and they moved up a spot. T- Tennessee moved up a spot because Georgia lost. That's 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 all there is. That's all there is to it. Now, you know, I I was not surprised to see the the top ten come out the way it did, but you know, and, and getting a little ahead of myself, you know, is Georgia five, Tennessee's at four, Ohio State's at three, Texas at two, and Alabama's at number one. If that would have been a little different, you know, let's say they would have only dropped Georgia to four and kept Tennessee at five, I'd have bought that. I'd have bought that. You know, Tennessee was off. Yeah, Georgia had the loss. You know, they, they need to move down at least one, you know, to get behind to get behind Alabama. But but, you know, it is what it is, you know, and, you know, every week that goes by, we get closer and closer to the college football selection committee and what their stuff is going to look like. So, hey, so, hey, you know, is the is the committee going to look at this the same way the AP voters have? You know, how similar is this going to look? You know, when we look at the last week of or, you know, the, the last week that we're really going to be paying attention to the AP poll versus you know the the first week of what the the college football playoff poll is going to look like how how similar are they going to be you know how how similar are wins and losses uh basically taken into account but but we'll see we're getting there every week that goes by we're getting there but yeah tennessee's off uh, they go to arkansas next week it's going to be a great game because arkansas is coming off of a loss to texas a and m so they're, they're licking a few wounds but uh, off this week, they move up one spot to number four. Ohio State, again, I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the video, they won their game, but they stayed at three. Uh, fair, fair. Um, like I said, don't know a whole, whole lot about Ohio State. Uh, Ohio State will be one of those teams now that I will start. They'll be a, a, in, a, in a select small group of teams that I'll start paying closer attention to the, the farther we get on to the season, especially after the committee uh polls come out and we'll, we'll kind of see how their schedule lines up against the other top five or top at least well probably top 10 teams seeing as how you know now we have a 12 team playoff uh texas fell one down to number uh two and texas had a texas had a win over mississippi state that a lot of people said that they struggled with uh, you know what I, i'll go back and watch the replays on that game um from what i understand arch manning had had a good game had a, had a great game put up some pretty impressive numbers, um, which, you know, if anybody is surprised with how good Arch Manning is, then you haven't really been paying attention, really. Um, he, you know, in, in the limited playing time that he got last year, he, I mean, he, he, he balled out. He, he, he showed off. And the fact that I know me personally, and maybe I'm in the minority, maybe I'm in the majority, I don't know. But, you know, there were some people that came out and said, well, yeah, I'm just shocked and surprised 
that he's staying at Texas and he didn't hit the portal to go somewhere else that he knew he would where he knew he'd be able to start this year because he knew, hey, Quinn Ewers is still going to be there. Quinn Ewers is still going to be the starter, but he stayed. I, that speaks volumes to that to that guy's that young man's maturity, and it reinforces how I know he was raised being a member of the Manning family. If he and I don't know these people personally, I don't want to give you the wrong idea or anything. However, I, I do know people that do, and if. Arch Manning ever pulled one of those Matthew Sluka stunts and got mad, took his ball, and decided to go somewhere else because he either wasn't getting an NIL deal the way he thought he was supposed to be getting it or just because he wasn't getting enough playing time. The least of his worries would be that he'd be disowned by the rest of the Manning families, including his two uncles and his grandfather, who he was named after. So, no, the fact that he stayed at Texas it did not surprise me in the least. Um, I w- I'll even go as far as to say I expected him to stay, and I would have been more than shocked if, if he would have left and gone, and gone somewhere else because I, I'm, if someone were to tell me that he was that kind of player, I, I wouldn't buy it. I don't think he's built that way. You know, he's going to sit there. He's going to develop. He's going to learn. He's going to take maximum, you know, opportunity of every opportunity he gets. And, you know, he's – do not be surprised in the least if by the time he leaves Texas, whether it's uh, two or three years from now or three or four years from now, whatever, do not be surprised if while in his time at Texas – Texas wins the national championship, and Arch Manning wins the Heisman. He, as y'all can say what you want to about that at this point, but he is on. You know, everybody talks every year about oh, you know, the, the Heisman watch list and who's on the short list for this year. Play the long game with him. I'm not saying he's going to win it this year. Hell, he may not even win it next year. But I, I, I will be shocked if, like I said, in his tenure at Tennessee. Texas doesn't win a national championship and he doesn't win the Heisman. That's that's going to be surprising to me. If he keeps developing the way he has through last year and what he's done this year, and because, again, anybody who has paid any, any attention at all to football in the Southeast will tell you. I mean, Steve Sarkeesian knows what he's doing when it comes to an elite offense, and he's got the rings and trophies to prove it. So... It's it, that is just a matter of time before, you know, Texas is probably going to be the next Alabama or their twin brother if Alabama's on their way back. Um, but that does leave us with Alabama. Um, Alabama moves up three spots to number one. Alabama hasn't looked that good in a game in a long time. Um, people sports commentator people that are out there that that get listened to um, that know a whole lot more about this than I do are calling the Alabama Georgia game last night probably the best SEC SEC football game of the last two or three three or four decades um, and I think they're right I, I do you know if and and that game could have gone so many other different directions so easily but you know, if Alabama would have continued the onslaught and, you know, they would have ended up winning, you know, 30 or 40 something to nothing or seven, you know, just a blowout, you know, that would have been one thing. Um, but no, Georgia found a way to claw back, albeit, you know, kind of one of those too little, too late kind of things, um, you know, with Carson Beck throwing three interceptions. With, uh, with Carson Beck throwing three interceptions, you know, you can only expect so much. But, you know, rightfully so. Alabama moves up three spots into the number one spot. So there you go. That's the new top ten out. Uh, of course, you know, 11 through 20 are, are, are down there. We'll see what, what potentially may happen with changes with those teams as the, as the season goes along. But not, not really a whole lot of surprises in, in this week's top ten. Um, should shape up for another really good round of games 
next week. I know um, Alabama has Vanderbilt. I know Tennessee has Arkansas. Um, that's the only two I know right off the top of my head. But we'll do some preview stuff later on in the week leading up to that. So again, thanks for checking out the videos. Thanks for any kind of patience. Y'all have y'all have shown me all the mistakes I make are mine. Yeah, I research this stuff as good as I can, but I'm just enjoying doing it. I, I really am. There are a couple of different reasons, a few of which are private that I'm doing that I'm I'm doing this channel and getting back into this, but I've I've really enjoyed it and I appreciate the the support that all my new followers um have, have shown me and and you know, just you know, giving it a shot, you know, few extra after a few extra minutes along just to, to listen to, to me ramble a little bit but um again y'all have a great weekend y'all have a great week and we'll see you at the next time